this chance. We um, we have some considerations that Toronto may well be just testing the map pool here. It's actually quite interesting. Yes, against Atlanta FaZe. They're yeah. playing all of the brand new square up maps. You get both the Rios in the mix. Like Toronto has a 20 and two record in hardpoint. I'm gonna say that again, 20 and two. Like if they do well the major, that's conversation for best hardpoint team of all time. Rio is one of the only maps they lost. They'll play it against Atlanta phase. They do not care. High rise for the map five. If we get there, Toronto are 0 and 1. They're squaring up, and I feel like Toronto were just saying to Atlanta phase, like, if you beat us on these maps, then we just know what to ban against you in the future. But that's a long term discussion right now in the short term. Opening salvo, Atlanta phase get that initial time, but it is the square ups of all square ups for the moment. A nice little battle towards the middle of the map, but Atlanta phase for the moment kills are flowing their direction. Oh, we dropping Salvo in the first hill of the game. I like to see it. Here we go, though. Yeah, it's uh, a good start for face. Looking over towards this rotation, over towards P2. Keep an eye on Scrappy. We'll be looking to try and get some sort of pitch going on from the mid map. Has to be alive for that Windsor gunfight up against Celium. So P2 coming in very, very shortly. Toronto Ultra give up 22 points. And maybe a couple more by the time FaZe will get on there over towards P1. But rotation should be locked in for Toronto. Can they hold tight? Oh, for the moment, they're looking good right there. Even leaving the back spawns open. They have two players pushed out towards red, and they're waiting for those dumpster jump ups to come through. So, insight in the players on Toronto. If they get these kills, FaZe are going to be in a bad spot. Abizi looking to pounce, though. Found the route to make it towards the time, but tagged up along the way. But insight forced in a cubby, and Atlanta FaZe never got the bad spawns, and inside the hill, now the kill's still going their direction. The tears eventually clean house. They get the clean break in Atlanta FaZe. Get to run the score up just a little bit. 30 seconds left on this old time, and I mean, Ultra, they might try to strip it away from Abizi if he gives it to him, but for the moment, that rotation, Atlanta FaZe are way ahead of the game. Yeah, Toronto Ultra need to make sure they get a few points here if they possibly can. 15 seconds up for grabs. Salim going to try his best to lock this down as long as he can. It's going to be a 13 or 14 for Toronto Ultra. So not necessarily the hottest of starts for our major one champions. Atlanta Fears are locked in over towards the junk side. Push going to start coming very, very quickly. Those scrap of the boys are already here. Abizi is able to find one. Simp and Salim volume up as well. Good teamwork coming through from Toronto Ultra so far. A minute now popped. Ready to go. On hill number three, as things start to rotate around, big kills coming in from a BZ, gonna pull scrap away alongside with Envoy. Push now gonna have to come through from the market side. Good start from FaZe here. I know Octane Tappy too, because Atlanta FaZe have the L setup going on. They pushed out the jump side, so Sam playing it passive over on Coop, but still gets found out. But already that is 25 perfect seconds for Atlanta FaZe. Now it is the backline AR players inside the point that need to get the kills. They've done exactly that, and Atlanta FaZe have held that junk pressure perfectly. You funnel them in through Coop. You might get traded out, but inside the hill, Selim doing what he does best might get dropped by the way that is a very strong hold there for atlanta phase who of course might be in a good position on the rotation as well envoy and scrap trying to piece them up but a 40 point lead for atlanta this is what they like to see on karachi 100 percent it's around ultra though i suppose you know a couple of odd moments here and there you still have a very very close game won't be too perplexed by this incredible gunfight one by draws though envoy will fall that's Ron Ultra just going to try and keep FaZe off the point as long as they possibly can. 50 seconds still to go here. Don't expect a whole load of time. But if, well, these kills keep flowing inside of, of Atlanta FaZe, that makes it three dead now. Then this time can be soaked. Envoy's the only one left momentarily. Spawns towards the backside for Toronto Ultra. You can get pinned in here if you're not careful. Atlanta FaZe, that's four kills in a row without answer from the side of Toronto. You really do need to start stepping things up. Clean next inning in two and ten. You would think on Karachi, it's his map. It's the kind of map that he would thrive in. But right now, FaZe are running them. Atlanta phase, this is a hill they play perfectly as well. You had guys like a BZ off spawn with the MCW because he knows he's going to be on the rotation over towards junk, but they just handled the pressure on this hill perfectly. They had the timing exactly correct on when you want to pinch middle and admittedly you might lose the final eight seconds, but it means you get that rotation over towards the oh. junk hill. That is a wild spawn for Kleenex to be able to get though, but three and 12 for the moment. His opportunity maybe to turn things around. He was given a gift. He's looking to take advantage of it but for Kleenex he's got a long way to go his teammates just got obliterated off the map oh, Tras just reads it perfectly as well 12 and 5 from him I was talking a little bit of smack this morning so I, well, I don't know he was talking a little bit of smack but some inspirational tweets coming out from Draza, which we love to see 
Now for the setup for Orlando Fair. looking very, very solid over towards P4. This is a dominant start. 30 seconds to go on this hill. Toron Ultra setting up from the right side. Can they find a push? You're going to get through Sim first. Will you manage to do that? Scrap will find in. Draza going to have to back on down. He may well be 12 and 5. Make it now 30. And is the 14th going to be found there as well over towards Kleenex? Not quite. Holding it down. Not quite getting as many points as they would like. Four stop for a second. But for Toronto Ultra here, we're going to be heading into a second rotation. They're going to find themselves 70 plus points behind their chance. Not necessarily what we expected heading into map number one. It, it honestly is like a snowball effect as well, right? Toronto had that early rotation in P2. It gets broken down, and since then, Atlanta Fays have just been handling the map perfectly. So much so that even going into this new set of rotations, Atlanta Fays currently have the left side spawns for that future P2 rotation. Of course, got to get the kills first. A long way to go before we get there. And Ultra, for the first time in a long time, it will start soaking up the hill. Kleenex inside the objective, and it has all the players on the wings. And of course, well, Toronto finally have a bit of an advantage. It's a cruise missile to break it down draza gets toronto out of time yeah busy coming around from the flank for the p3 side as well scrap should be dead to rights anyway second gun fight gonna come through inside trying to stay alive as long as he can a couple of players from phase just staring at him coming in off the respawn nice and tight setup from phase to stumble toronto ultra maybe trying to find some control over towards p1 some good time for phase you have p2 rotation for the most part here you keep an eye on where abizi is he's gonna be heading over now with 10 seconds to go over towards p1 these kills starting to come through at the right time for ultra those are the numbers that are gonna be here you need to probably see a decent break from toronto ultra over towards p2 side abizi gonna hold it down though he can find one tries it won't be able to find anything big gunfights coming on through insight is there to find one more can't quite get it abizi nearly dead to right Gonna go for the child. Abizi's gonna be forced out. As are the rest of Atlanta. Phase of BZ falls. It's a good break on the initials coming in from Toronto Ultra. And this is the opportunity to make amends from that first P2 mistake, right? They would have lost the rotation battle, but a good spawn and good gunny coming through. So you get this initial time. Don't want Sim to be alive for too long, but Scrap ain't gonna be the guy to stop him. Envoy there for the trades and him in insight there for the next two. Base players being back down, gonna have to hit through the front. And if you feel the tides might be turning, Jamie Craven insight cannot get the cruise missile. Big kills capping on the minimap as well. You got rotations, you got scrap time being fought for. This is teams trying to keep up with everything. And for the moment, it's Atlanta coming out on top. Incredible stuff from Atlanta face so far. Rotation looking very, very solid as well. Insight was taken down on the early rotation as he tried to find his way over, but nobody from Toronto Ultra in the boats right now. Atlanta Fays are going to be feeling so good about this rotation, so good about map number one and their chances in this series. Let's go for a listen with Atlanta Fays. Try to get out. Jamie, Jamie. Jamie's going to be third, maybe. Yeah, he's third. Hey, he's third. He's third. He's third. He's third. Sit down, sit down. I, 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 I did, I did. They're probably coops side, too. Yeah, so listen, just hold your turn. Yeah, they're spawning coops side, okay? Yeah, yeah, stay on time. Stay on time. Stay on time. Okay. Middle, middle, middle. Toby. I'm spawning coop. Dead. Nice. Come here. I'm in time. He's trying. He's just late. He doesn't even know you're there. Nice. Yo, yo, yo. Head up. He doesn't love hitting health. I don't see him, Coop. I'm trying to. Hold this. 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 Right, i just keep playing. Guarantee that shit. I'm trying, bro. I'm looking at the push. There's still behind you. White track. Back left, Dylan. Dylan's one shot back left. No, man. He's uh, BK, 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 Toby. One's one time. I'm not a big fan of the comms, but I am a massive fan of the gameplay. Atlanta phase, when they get that iron grip, there is almost no escaping it. Ultra fighting just from so far behind. They're getting teed off on, on the hard point, so much so that they just can't really collect any of these time to click on fights. It is so difficult that for them to work for. Maybe good news from Ultra, though. They have a rotation. One of the only times they've been able to try to keep things stable and get ahead of the game. Bad news, Tom. They are down by 100 points. Yeah, it has really felt like they've always been that step behind in terms of these rotations. And, well, we haven't been able to say very often that they are the first ones here and they will find some good time. But this is a very good opportunity. Insight, once again, going a little spray. Cruise Missile would be a really, really big help. 
over towards the next potential couple of hills if Atlanta phase allow it to go that long. Push going to come in from the top three side and also pushing in from red. Inside needs to try and survive. He knows this. And boy, we'll find the first one to draw us through the front side. They have a potential pinch being set up as well. Selium says no to the cruise missile once again. Scrap all alone. Finds one. Push in from Selium. Is it going to come? Is he going to offer him the gunfight? He is, but Scrap will back on down the rest of the team. Also already over here, and all of a sudden, Kleenex is able to find the kill. The hold decent enough from Toronto Ultra, but they wouldn't have minded a few more there. It's such a long way to go, though, right? The cruise missile could have been the setup to break yeah. through this P1 as well, but now you are still fighting from behind. But the 100-point lead does get chopped down to about 50 or 60 going in towards new. Actually, 60 on the dot. So the hope is still here, but a long way to go. The fight for power positions, by the way, right now commencing on the map. The fight for the time it is getting traded. Atlanta phase, every single kill they get sets them up so far in advance. And looking at the kill feed, they seem to be getting them all. It's going so well for Atlanta phase in this map number one. About to break 220. Toronto Ultra trying to set themselves up the same as way as FaZe did, but draws are holding down the street, locking down the bridge side of the map, and it may well be the game here over towards P1. Four seconds to go until you're hitting 230. It's good locking from FaZe so far. In Toronto, I mean, you gotta flood. You gotta give them off time, right? You're gonna have to continue to do so for just a little bit longer, because Atlanta FaZe still bodies on the point. So Toronto overcommit just a little bit. The back spawns, I don't know if you call that open, but it doesn't matter, because Atlanta FaZe, they're gonna be the first team over towards P2 and Ultra. This is not an opportunity or a situation where you can take your time on the breaks. You have to fly to break this down. They have to move and they have to move quickly. They found a break over towards P2 last time around. Can they do it again? But you absolutely must this time around if you are to run Ultra. Scrap can find one through the mid alley. He isn't going to find a second. Draza is there to shut it down. 10 seconds away now for FaZe. Draza, can you hold it? It's looking like it's going to be a land of FaZe to deal. What is the only the third time that Toronto have lost a hard point? Oh, yeah. Atlanta FaZe, map number one. All about their business. Not even a big celebration. Just locked in, ready for map two. But as you pointed out, that is only loss number three on the year in Hardpoint. And that is the perfect record Ultra had on Karachi. No longer. Atlanta Bay is coming to play. And I got to say, just looking at it on paper, you have to imagine Ultra had the edge. They played them twice at the major, had their number both times. Atlanta Bay's maybe those improvements starting to show off just a little bit. I know specifically on P4 on this map, Atlanta FaZe have looked like the best team on that hill specifically. Uh, and that is certainly a place to get ahead of the game. But that was start to finish a lights out performance from Atlanta. Again, all about their business here on Sunday. Yeah, fantastic start to the series for Atlanta FaZe. Really big game coming in from Draza. Kind of performance he was brought into FaZe to do. And going up against the best teams in the game, you need him to bring that kind of level. And in my word, he brought it. 5,000 damage to tip it off. An 80 point win against Toronto Ultra is nothing to turn your nose up at at all. Fantastic start for Atlanta Phase. And I mean, it just kind of felt like an Atlanta Phase game, right? One of those moments here and there where they just find clean breaks and just make it look so easy. There's so many transitional kills coming through in their way as well. It, it just felt like the rotation game was won by them nearly every single time. We were very, very rarely seeing Toronto Ultra first ones here. They're going to be able to hold it down. And even when we did, it started early. The breaks from phase were coming thick and fast. Uh, absolutely. I mean, you know, you had the like sort of omnipresent force of the ARs on Atlanta that were there the entire time. Like the two different times Insight was nearly going to get a cruise missile. The first time it was Draza that shuts him down. The second time it was Selium. But even when we're watching like Insight's like perspective, he's just having to look two different directions constantly because Atlanta phase, we're always on the map, hitting the hills from every single direction. And and of course, the awareness on point as well. I know that back junk kill again. Simp was like by himself over by Coop fighting the entire Toronto team. He gets one kill. He doesn't over chow. He just backs down. And literally because he just stays alive, helps by his team maybe an extra 20 seconds. So slang there from the ARs. Big brain plays coming out of the SMGs. And again, just a well orchestrated map from start to finish. Atlanta phase had the edge. They quite literally never looked back all the way through as you can see from the game flow not a single misstep from Atlanta phase and that's one way I mean I don't even think Toronto Ultra you could see in the player cams that we just got a shot of that very very similar on both levels of things Toronto Ultra won't be too perplexed by that and they know they were just outplayed I don't think they'll be too concerned it may well just be their third hard point loss of the season which again just beggars belief but 
they will not be too concerned by this just yet. They know they have it in them to win these next three matches that they potentially needed to. And it's still going to be a very good series, but that is a one that Atlanta Fizz will be feeling very nice about, especially a comfortable win about number one up against Toronto Ultra. And Rio SD is going to be a fun map to go into as yeah. well for both of these squads. On the Toronto side, they have had phases number in search and destroy. It's kind of a wild thing to say for Atlanta that they're not like the clear cut best SD team in the game, but they're also a straight up step behind right now. New York has teed off on Atlanta in search and destroy. Toronto, it's been the exact same thing. Atlanta, better than everybody else in the game mode, but they have not eclipsed to sort of get that top spot back. Rio's an interesting map. New addition. You got the terrors on it. Do you think it's going to be fun for them? And maybe more good news for Atlanta. We also have watched Toronto get 6 owed on this map as well. That's sort of a good news, bad news thing. Because, of course, for Toronto, if you get 6 owed on a map and you're playing against Atlanta, they've gone back to the drawing boards. They're going to come in with a new game plan. They have a bit more experience now. They're going to try to make that adjustment. But s and D, not a pain point for the team. But a pain point against the top squads could not win an S and D against Toronto at the major. They gotta show off the goods here. Hundred percent. It's their first opportunity to show what goods they have on Rio as well. From Ultra, we have had well various <laughs> different outcomes, of course. A couple of wins underneath their belt, of course. They're the one on one record, sorry, but that one loss, as you rightly pointed out, was not very good. Uh, one that we will absolutely want to forget about, but I think you're right. You know, they wouldn't be coming back into this map if they didn't already have a plan and have already figured out what exactly went wrong. Finally, mid-map control was something they were really struggling on, so it's going to be interesting to see what FaZe can do with that. But Toronto Ultra, we know have got they've got it in them to bounce back here. Yeah, absolutely no problem whatsoever. They are the consensus best team in the game right now and can very much turn this around. But I think it's the manner of the map one, right? I think that's what would concern me more than anything. It was a comfortable map number one, but that is in the past. We are heading over towards Rio. Search and destroy. Coming up. And for both these two teams, Atlanta phase, I mean, as mentioned, they have very much struggled against Toronto Ultra. But are these s &D stats going to help them out on this one chance? Well, the s &D stats look really good, apart from against Ultra and Subliners, essentially. I Look, we, it's Atlanta phase. We know the players, Abizi, First Blood King, all these guys have massive clutch potential in the late half of the round. Their S&D stats are fantastic. It is quite literally just not against Toronto. Toronto has Atlanta's number. They've like, again, seven and two map count at the major, undefeated in search and destroy. And this is, again, going to be a very quick look on what they can do. Abizi, always going to be a fun player to watch. First Blood King, you just know he's going to sprint into the action. Him and Sint maybe playing a little bit of bait on the A side of the map. And looks like Ultra is not going to fall into this trap. No trophies out in round number one. So it's going to be one of the slow rounds. And again, for an adjustment sake on Toronto, there were so many bang outs on the B site the last time they played it. They have just completely switched up the pace. Doesn't make it necessarily easier as Sint finds the first blood. But you see Toronto, brand new game plan they're going to be bringing to Rio. Little angle coming in from Selium. Couple of shots over the top, and then simple as that to finish things off. Information is key here, and Abizi's getting plenty of it down this side, but no information over towards the B side. This bomb will be looking like it is going to go down. Simpinko will be here very, very quickly after the fact. Insight going to take a couple of bullets. We'll back on down. The bomb is down. It's a 4v3 for Atlanta phase. Can they manage to find an attack here? If you're a roll trap, first gunfight's going to be huge. Anybody will find it, won't get out. Abizi is there to trade things away. So he needs to stay alive with 25 seconds to go. He's getting hunted and gets hunted. Clean X now left in a one versus three. Make it a one versus two now. Knows where the players are over towards the bridge side. Has to challenge and Abizi will find it. Great retake from FaZe, but they have the numbers. Absolute stuff getting. Nothing he can do. You get the first blood, you have the man advantage. Nobody overcommits. Nobody makes a mistake. It is the terrors up top after the bomb gets planted. Great news is they get the intel on insight out by the steps. The better news is they at least trade out that kill on Envoy. So the team worked completely on point. That is exactly how Atlanta Phase want to get things done. And as far as round one goes, again, no trophies coming through at the start. Got to be careful about the stuns and nades. Atlanta play around it perfectly and get that early advantage in the game. I think for Toronto Ultra that we've seen the passive setup starting to come through in that attack and what they were trying to offer up with that. I think, you know, an element of that was a lack of trophies, of course, but curious to see if that continues on the attacking side. It's certainly not going to be the case here for Atlanta phase. Head first over towards the A side. Envoy and Co. actually enjoyed a couple of moments here and there over towards the garage. Scrap will find first blood over onto Draza. That's a hail Mary from the other side of the map by the looks of things, but relevant on that. 
And Manafe is still, well, we're filming a plan over towards A-side. Not going to come around this time. We're going to try and switch it up. Doing the dance, though, in the middle of the map. It looks like Toronto Ultra are ready to answer this. And Scrap never overcommitted, right? He doesn't try to take that map space. He just lets the action come to him. So he's got intel on it too, if not the entire team of Atlanta. And you see his teammates already nearby the elevators. Kleenex trying to strike. He's got Envoy here from the help. And Atlanta Faze have to back down again. But now if they go this direction, it's going to be Insight looking over top. So the ARs constantly calling out to their sub. What direction do you have to run? They're ahead of the game. They get all the kills. And why not collect some scouts along the way? Headshots rolling through. Trade instantaneous. And the smooth moves that Atlanta Faze wanted to go for on the rotation. Toronto again, mistake free. Both the ARs posted. Both the SMGs knew exactly where they needed to run. And that is efficiency on those rotations as well. You can see they're bringing their very best today against Atlanta. Flowing like water on both sides of things there, right? The defense answering where they needed to. Not even necessarily too many kills going down, but just making sure you have those bodies there. Those guns up, the information gained. Good job from Toronto Ultra to keep track of exactly where phase were going. They lock it down pretty convincing round on either side of things. Nades over towards this A side. Only one player holding it down. Insight now will be trying to track a player over towards the side who's playing a little bit more aggressive than we see Scrap do on the previous round, but the push over towards B starting to come through now. Envoy has cleared out the site. May not have found the kill, and you've got to try to not overcommit there as well. Simple fall. The BC was there to find the first blood. It's a three versus three. Yeah, they had a player trapped, and it was a BZ that was trapped. He might live, but at least you get the nade kill in the meantime. So they're playing off the information well. Number five on the back line right now. Drazas watching these players slide out towards the steps. And here's the smoke to get aggressive. You lose a man in the meantime, but Envoy trying to jump out and make the play. Keep in mind, he has the bomb, so his life incredibly valuable. And then in the meantime, it's like the, the grouping scenario right now. The Wolf Pack of Atlanta phase. Talk about a way to play with trades. They're just riding each other's coattails for the moment. And again, you got the main advantage. It is just about trading the kills. Envoy will be able to get the plant down, but can he live for long? I would like to think probably not if you're a phase fan. Yeah, a busy shock ends him. And all of a sudden, Insight is left now in a one versus three. Not going to happen. The Wolf Pack of phase working out wonderfully. If he was going to come on through defensive rounds remaining king here so far between these two teams, phase 2-1 to the good. And yeah, for Ultra, there's just no info, right? Really good movement coming in from FaZe, clearing out different sides of the map, and all of a sudden, they know exactly where Ultra are. As Fuse comes through, and land FaZe, regain the lead. And going out of their way, again, to put it, mistake-free Call of Duty. Both teams getting after it. And this is effectively, in a sense, just like preparation for both of these squads for if and when they have to face off at, against a major, or at a major, rather. By the way, Atlanta Faye is so far, so good. Making moves on the map. First blood's been on point. Might want to dodge a nade this go around, but got a BZ 5-1 doing what he does best. As it looks like Atlanta Faye might be ready to square up towards the middle of the map. Or just get the coordination flowing. Scrap might have had an initial nade kill when he was on defense, but he got met with one in kind. Ultra going to have to fight with a man down. Can Faye find a way through still, though? A hit over towards B seems like the more likely when you do have that number advantage. Kleenex is going to be there to maybe potentially shut this one down. Inside going to try and watch the flank. Now going to take a little bit more control over towards the street. Looking over towards bridge. We'll be getting that information. Phase don't know it. Ultra know where they are. Push going to start coming on through. You'd imagine Envoy is going to start hitting a potential flank. Or is he just going to go through boxes? Either way, this bomb is down. Next gunfire wall is going to be huge. But Kleenex will get taken out. Four versus two now for FaZe, and Rio maybe potentially starts to become a bit of a problem here for Toronto Ultra. Still surviving over towards this side, though, is inside, but he is the only remaining survivor of Toronto Ultra. No eyes on there from Draza, but this is just such a difficult position for inside to do anything from. Uh, it is utterly hopeless. If you get a kill, that's great. Not even going to have that opportunity. I mean, both these teams playing very mistake-free. This seems to be one where if you get that initial first blood, that might be the thing that just decides the round based on the way they're playing it. I mean, Atlanta quite literally get the fragnade coordination down the mid lane, pick up scrap, and then you saw what they did with Selium, leave him on one side of the map, but he's just playing an absurd off angle where he's never going to die. Everybody else grouped up together for the trades on the other side, and again, it is just off angles on point. Everybody playing their life like clockwork right now, so the first blood fight might be the most important thing right now on this map. 
Okay, over towards Tron Ultras. That 71% conversion when they do get a hold of it. So not too hot either. But well, I mean, you're going to get two there. So that's going to help. Kleenex gets two free kills on the Simp and Abizi who are trying to make the play. It certainly wasn't it. And all of a sudden, this attack for Ultra is looking very, very solid. Selim and Draza are going to have to try and find something here. The push going to come through. Three for Kleenex in the round. Draza left all on his own. Bombs are going to be down over towards their side. And once again, it is a hopeless situation. Good shots coming through. Big round for Ultra. It's answer back there. Get the first blood, win the round. Might be the name of the game. And I yep. will say, I don't. I didn't miss it on the mini map. I don't know if uh, Atlanta Phase had bad intel, if they were calling out the cross, but someone took a deep route. But either way, you had the Terrors trying to make an aggressive play. They just get fed into the blender that was Kleenex, waiting for the kills to line up. So either bad comms in the moment or just an interesting attempt that doesn't pan out. Either way, Kleenex happy to collect those kills. That is a nice little freebie round going through. But again, thus far, 100% rate. Whatever team gets the first blood has been able to execute. Which way is it going to lie this time? Seems to be important. Simp not quite coming across the crosshairs of Kleenex, who's found himself in an interesting spot. And he's got company. No shots coming through on the other side of things, and all of a sudden they could be pinned in. Get out. Match get out of dodge, and all of a sudden Envoy is here to help. Back in and up. The answer on Ultra, and without taking any casualties, find the information, back phase down, but it makes phase, maybe think about what they have to do here, Insight. It's going to slow them down momentarily, Ultra will be heading over, 50 seconds to go here, still for this as well. And Insight did his job by slowing them down, but now on the flip side, Scrap is playing a completely different angle, instead of being tucked in the back of his spawn, you see the cheeky spot he's got top catwalk in, that is a trap being set, Atlanta phase, best not fall into it. And things are open, things are sneaky. Abizi, you see how smart the man is, getting the intel, checking every corner. There's the first blood they were looking for. Well, usually, a first blood is preceded by a round. Can they find it, though? Next kill's going to be massive. Insight's going to try and hold it down here. He will get some information. Will he find a kill, though? Playing the tight angle over towards the boxes. Abizi, once again, just clearing absolutely everything. No spot is free, but Kleenex has found himself in a good spot. Is able to find two. Envoy makes it one versus one. And there's only three seconds on the clock. This is Operation Stay Alive in the Smoke. Try to hide. Can't do it. Envoy, not Houdini. Indraza too quick on the jump. The only way Ultra could have won that round would have been off the clock because Atlanta Faze spent so much time swinging the map back and forth. And that disappearing act, not good enough. And Draza, you already know, he's chatting about it. Having a good one there, but that is just great work on just the spots that are being checked. I mean, think about that. Scrap's got a cheeky hiding spot. Abizi sniffs it out. Insight tries to play it an off angle. Everybody on Atlanta seeming with his heads up ready for that one. And even the nice little corner in the smoke. Atlanta phase. Can't hide from them. Can't run from your fate. 4 2 lead in the moment, but in sight. There's the first blood throne. We're looking for Kleenex soaring and flying. And at least the trades are going to come through. So you still keep the man advantage. 2v3 right now for FaZe to work with. Oh, I swear to God that it even felt like Simp was going to win that one as well. Scrap eventually able to pick that one up. It's a 3 versus 2 in favor of Ultra. Draws and Sally, I'm going to have to find something here. It's going to be a double hit coming in over from the top of the escalators. Yeah, back it up. No need to child that. Scrap and go just trying to stay alive here. You got to hunt them down if you're faced. 25 seconds still to do so. Shot's going to come in from Sally. Makes it to two versus two. Awkward gunfight in sight. Oh, wow. He's just about going to find the last one. That got scary for a second. They just about get it. In sight with the final kill. We'll get a better description of what actually happened there from the kill cam coming in. It's a good snap, to be honest with you. Does well. And you can just see how on point you have to be with the trades right now. Because that is a moment where both teams are just straight up in the mix in this moment. So, Scrap a little bit lucky just to be able to slide past, drag the attention. But, I mean, again, for Selium, so close maybe to getting that trade. Everybody going to be in the mix. But, Ultra again, you get the first blood, you win the round. That is rain true. This is some of the best search and destroy we have seen on the year thus far between these two teams. No nade kills coming through though. So Atlanta phase, maybe this is just going to be their game plan. Look for some intel and just run back and forth or maybe try to sniff out if that B site gets left open. Ultra, no pressure on the map for the moment. Got to be careful if you rotate over towards A. Envoy has an option of some weird angles, but they've seen nothing. So yeah, plant the bomb. Why not? Well, you're on your way over though if you're Ultra. That bomb will go down. Utility, not a lot for Kleenex. 
he going to be the tip of the spear that can potentially puncture this defense of this bomb? Draws is going to find insight. And that just makes this job a lot more difficult. Flank's going to come on through. BZ gets snapped onto. Scrap will find one. Envoy gets out. Information is there that one player's chasing him down in the... Backup is on its way. Simple find one, though, after turning it around two versus two. Envoy makes it a two versus one. Can you find Celium? 15 seconds remaining. Playing a sneaky little spot. The shot's under the bomb, and here comes the child coming in. Big retake from Ultra. A man down as well. Four apiece. And that might just get some wind in their sails. I mean, as far as this game is played out, that is the difference maker round. That is the we do not get the first blood, but we still execute. And that is credit to the new pickup of Toronto Ultra in Dylan Envoy on the flank. I've never seen someone play the spot that Ibizi just played. Envoy, it seems like he was just expecting it. Because he also had a player that he could have shot in the back top eskies. But if he went for that one, he would have died in Atlanta phase win the round. So Envoy completely heads up play in that moment. He just bails his team out. Talk about the battle we have, right? I mean, battle for championships these squads are going to be getting after, but also the battle for who made the better roster change. Draws a map one <laughs> fried envoy right here, make it a big play. It is toe-to-toe -to -toe with these juggernaut teams. It's brilliant to watch. Just right notes for playing Rio Search and Destroy. Although I don't know if my ranked teammates will shoot quite as straight as everybody else on these rosters, but well, neither will I. Gold that bodies? Fact. No. Not <laughs> Whoa, come on. Clean next now. Trying to back it on down. Honestly, he has kind of been forced in this situation. Maybe he needs a little bit of help to get out. Celium was in an aggressive position. Is he going to give it away though? Shots going to start to fly in and Simp is going to have to be there to cover. Celium has been back down, but if he's the... Oh yeah! <laughs> the inside is there to shut it down. It was looking so promising. And now we have the 4v3 for your ultra. We're actually going to back on down. That was a huge moment. I think Atlanta phase, you want to make a play off this, right? I mean, if you're the man down, you try to jump into it. That is exactly what they do. But Kleenex plays it perfectly. So again, Atlanta phase, they do the right thing in the right moment. Ultra just ahead of the game. Kleenex going to shut you down. And I'm telling you that previous round was a difference maker. The momentum shift. Ultra, they have it now. One round away and they tie this series up. That is a hell of a round. I like that from a BZ's perspective. That looked to him like he was licking his chops. That's the freest flank of all time. Is it too good to be true? Yes, it is. But here's a look at Kleenex playing that off angle, watching the flank for his team, seals the deal on the round. But the instincts from a BZ, when that was too good to be true, he was like, wait a minute, someone's going to be watching this. And as he like had that thought, Insight's already got the barrel in his face, killing him. So <laughs> fun call of duty for the moment. Kleenex, by the way, making up for maybe the game one performance as well. 10 kills already. And Ultra panned out once. Maybe happy to give up this V-Bomb plant. Of course, now, Flank's not going to be open. Envoy not an open route. Selium's going to be watching that pressure. So we do have a different situation right now for the bomb plant. So Ultra players, it looks like they're going to four-man group up together and work straight through mid, but no. that is not a good start. No. Kleenex go with his pants down. Scrap's going to get a stun off here, or at least a nade, so some shots are going to start ringing on through. And if you're Ultra, you really do need to get moving. Envoy has found a way through, but the smoke distorting everything. Well, maybe giving him some timing. Sally will be taken down. Trying to clear out every single base he possibly can, but Draws has found two in the middle of the map with the Renetti. He's going to find the third as well. Draws are lighting up the kill feed. And Atlanta phase, tying things up, sending us to around 11. Big plays from Draws. Yeah, I think that might have been an ace. That might be a, a top five play of the week if we managed to catch from his point of view. He just went electric there with the Renetti. And again, the battle of the new guys on the roster just setting itself up for the round 11. Difference maker potentially in this series. Ultra, they have had their number in search and destroy the entire year. Granted, it's the start of the year, but nonetheless, here we go. Atlanta phase looking to get that revenge. Piz on the attacking side. The ace comes through from Draza, confirmed by production. Fantastic work from him. He's having a slow game with the full spree. The top right corner kind of proves that things have turned around. Sim now putting some aggression down over towards this A side. Look at this from Atlanta phase. They are stacking. They are feeling confident. Ultra are backing on down. These next couple of gunfights are huge, but they get Damn. slaughtered in garage, and all of a sudden it's down to Kleenex. And he did a man of his talent, surely not. Draza does get gunned, but. Kleenex now still with three bodies to get rid of. He's got to go so fast, dude. You got to look for the kills instantly. It's two players nearby. You got a rival nine. 
This is hopeless. Death is inevitable. Draza out here calling game. He was saying he's going to introduce you to God. I think we met him in the round 10. And Atlanta Faze get that SD win. Happy to see that Rio SD. And 2 0 up in this series. They have achieved that flow state. They can smell blood in that round 11. You can see it. All four of them together pushing down ramp. And as soon as that player backed up at the dumpster side, they are in. Two kills go their way over towards Garage, and that is the round. Draws it, turned it round after what was, I mean, he was having a fine performance, but made it just a very good one in those last couple of rounds. Really good performance from FaZe, who now have themselves a 2-0 to zero lead and an S&D win over the side of Toronto Ultra. Is this now the time for them to turn their fortunes around against the Canadian side? A high rise control will decide if we go any further. But man, I mean, look, uh, it's Ron Ultra. We're bringing that back to a certain stage there. But phase call game, I mean, two massive rounds to bring it back. I, I mean, keep in mind, the round before draws his ace. That was Ultra actually with Envoy on the flank. The first round we had where the first blood team did not actually win the round. Thinking that might be the momentum shift. Draws it just steals it right back. And honestly, not just like that top five play, maybe the number one play we have seen of the week, but also a few rounds before where Atlanta phase checking all the corners, scrap playing off angles, gets found out inside the same. Atlanta phase on point. Fantastic work from Atlanta phase so far. Two to the good up against Toronto Ultra. Map number three is going to be coming up next. Don't go anywhere. It's going to be a bang. your game with the scuff the official controller of the call of duty league slice up your competition with the executive chef operator now available in game in the call of duty store
season strong with the Call of Duty League Pack. Grab yourself the CDL Operator, Weapon Blueprint, and so much more. Check out the Call of Duty store in-game now. The Call of Duty League is brought to you by Monster Energy, the official energy drink of the CDL. And here we go, the man number three coming up in between Toronto and Atlanta face. And it's been, well, all really one-sided so far, but both these teams, we know what they can bring to the table. Heading into a control, this game could still go either way, but Atlanta phase really proving that they can hang with Toronto Ultra. The question has been asked so many on different occasions that we have seen so far this season, but Atlanta phase are not going anywhere here. Chance two to zero. Not at all. I mean, this again, looking at the pick and bands as we can talk about the record runs that these guys have had. If we're talking about best teams of all time, Atlanta phase, especially in Cold War, was injected into the conversation. Guaranteed top three, maybe top two. We could talk about that on a different day. But it was the series count where they went 13-0, had an absurd map win percentage, plenty of 3-0s, so many wins on land as well. It's Ron Ultra matching it. So many series wins in a row. They have been nearly untouchable. But again, looking at the map pool that Ultra let get through in the pick and bands, they're testing the waters against Atlanta Phase. Turns out the waters shark infested. They're getting limbs bit off left and right. You lose your perfect record on Karachi. Granted, a nail biter of the round 11 for the game too, but Atlanta come out on top of that as well. And now you have the least played control map for Toronto going against Atlanta Phase with a perfect record. So this is perfect records being risked on so many different fronts. And just the fact that it's Atlanta phase that could get the, the final stop before their series 13 and 0 uh, got tied. Things could have been good. Turns out though, Toronto players can't fly. Kleenex and Insight never sprouted their wings. Uh, and that's almost certainly gonna be a reset, some sort of issue, but that just means we get more time to wax and wane about Atlanta phase potentially getting a 3-0. And look, I think it's it, it wouldn't be unprecedented uh, coming into this that phase did this, but realistically speaking it would be very very impressive you know we talked about in the sense of that you know toronto ultra come into this and sort of said yeah okay we got six over on real last time around we want to try it out against the best other team in the game we want to try our good maps we want to try some of our bad maps up against them as well but for all that it is down to these map picks coming in from ultra they want to try some things out still credit where credit is due atlanta phase have looked fantastic so far in maps one and two Yes, I mean, I think the interesting thing about this series is like Atlanta and Toronto, the expectation in a winner's final or a grand final or something, maybe at every single major, but certainly the next one. That seems to be how things are shaping up, how the pick and bands are going to look different, what adjustments go through. If they happen to square up on a Rio S and D again, is Scrap ever going to try to play that weird off angle top cat or do you not even risk it? Do you back down and play safer? So it is just comparison of how do these teams look today versus how are they going to play each other against the major? So mm. it is a learning experience and a learning series right now for both of these teams. But for Atlanta faves, it's vibes flowing. Again, Draza coming out with some cocky tweets. He has been known to do it. And so far, he has absolutely delivered monster performance in game number one. They've been selling more lighting up the kill feed. And again, when things were looking a little bit sketchy, a little bit rough, Draza gives you the ace in round 10 to take that momentum. So here's a look at that scuff play. Shout out to the observers for catching this, by the way, because it is chaos in these moments to try to pick whose perspective you're gonna watch. But it is Draza the round before. Man can see through smoke and here's him gunning down players left and right. I mean, that was the first blood he gets on Kleenex. The rest is with the Renetti. Shots on point, easy wins there. And again, nice little reload and drops the final guy as well. Killing everybody on the map. Draza making his presence known. No more from Draza. That was the turnaround, wasn't it? No, oh, and he's letting them know. We can all let Brid. Don't necessarily need to repeat. But irrelevant of that, Draza's feeling himself in this Atlanta phase squad. It's got to feel good. You're going up against the team that really have had your number, especially finding a search and destroy against them. Look, you're Karachi, you know you're a good hard point team. You know Atlanta phase are going to come into that. The search and destroy has notoriously always been fantastic for them. So to find that after Ultra, I really have had them well, pegged in the corner yet. The majority of the season so far, to get that back, there's got to be a nice feeling. Scrap clearly is not feeling the pressure though. My man, what what year am I in? Is he going to fidget spinner? Oh, uh, that, yes, absolutely a fidget spinner. 
Look, man, he's a young guy. Fidget spinners, they, they stay around, different generation. But again, I think the calmness you see on Ultra, like obviously they're feeling the heat in this series. But again, this is a team that is already thinking long term. They have 200 CDL points already. I don't know if that's necessarily a guarantee that they make champs from this point on if they lose every single series from the rest of the year. But they're in a comfy spot. You know, you get to have fun. You get to relax. <laughs> and that is honestly, that, that's relatively impressive. I mean, Smiles on that guy. He can bounce. What do you know? New tricks. Yeah, He's like well, a, a seal. I mean, we can't tell if Insight's succeeding, but uh, maybe he is. Is Jamie able to do it as well? Oh, balance isn't quite there. Don't put your eye on it, mate. Come on. Insight's far old to be top far too old to be playing with the fidget spinner these days. And look, and if you're looking at the player cams, keep in mind, in game, incredibly intelligent. Don't be fooled. Super smart in game. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Well, I mean, look, I, I think, you know, we do like to be body language experts. Chance we have been over these past couple of weeks, but Toronto Ultra don't look like a team who are doing this zero down. Feel the kind of cementing that, you know, they are coming into this and trying out some things up against the best other team in the game. And that's how they're feeling about it. A 3-0, of course, they will not want it to happen. They will not want to have lost the first two maps by any stretch of the imagination. And they are heading into, well, their worst control map against phases, one where they are perfect, but Toronto Ultra will still be all smiles irrelevant. What happens here? They are playing the long game against FaZe, but FaZe for confidence just to help them get things back up and running against this Ultra side at 3-0 to zero would be lovely. Yeah, Heading into high rise control, can they find it? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And just pay attention to the stats, by the way. It is a perfect record overall for Atlanta FaZe on the map. They're attacking rounds, a big reason why. It is the life count where they have the advantage, so they can spawn trap, they can slay. But Atlanta FaZe are also nearly perfect when it comes to the objective. When they get the wipes on the map, they're so quick to triple or quad hop the zones. They'll play the objective, they'll play the TDM, they can do it all. So Ultra gonna get pushed in this one. Couple kills coming through. Easy wins already, and again, a double Double stack on A, but a time maybe to look for the spawn kills, but can't get them all. Uh -oh. Nice little bounce back there from Ultra. They're keeping the map control. No, oh, if Salim gets taken down here as well, all of a sudden, and if are forced into their spawn. For what was such a meticulous start to the attack? Almost playing like a search and destroy round. They don't find anything from it, but merely a touch over towards the A side. Now, all of a sudden, you are stuck in your spawn. And a couple of very, very good AR players going to keep you in there as well. Inside shots, not quite crispy enough to find the kill. That nade from Simp is probably going to be solid, but not solid enough. Shots going to be coming in once again inside through this fence. It's not the easiest gunfight, but the gunfights for Atlanta phase are significantly worse. Yet to find one apart from Simp. Taking down Kleenex. It's been a clinic so far and how to spawn trap from Ultra. They're locking them in eventually. Some respite for phase over towards the A side, but have they run out of time? This is truly absurd as well. I mean, this is everybody on point with the crosses as well. This is Atlanta phase. We're going to have to flood into his zone, but they're going to flood into death straight out over towards A. Kleenex waiting for the gunfight that he knows is going to happen. The coordination, though, good enough to at least get a trade. Selim does have a trophy and a single reinforcement, but he doesn't have the big play. Abizi is going to fall. And this is going to be the round. It's actually Draza that takes him down. Point nine on the clock. Atlanta Faye is actually keeping it close. Somehow get the extra kills and so desperate to stay alive. If they pulled this off, this would be insane. But I think they might actually be able to get it. Uh, it's looking like they have an opportunity. Gunfights coming on through. Scrap can find one. There Inside their answer, though. They eventually do get them off. A minor scare for Ultra. And Landa Faye is just about to survive. Final kill coming through from Insight. Yeah, I'll try. I mean, for what, 75% of that round? Very, very solid locking it in. That is a wild round, too. I mean, for the side of Atlanta phase, right? That is a, a decent opening break that instantly gets slammed in their face. Ultra get the map control. They nearly make some magic, but I mean, you got scrap nine and two. Maybe the fidget spinner knows something I don't. Balancing on his nose. Now he lights up the kill feed in round number one. Trying to follow things up. Abizi there for the first blood. Quick trades coming through, but Toronto, it's only a single man on the zone, and the teamwork always hyper efficient right there. Atlanta FaZe swarming the map, getting all the kills, got every lane covered everywhere Toronto tries to go. FaZe is going to be throwing bullets down range in your face. Spread the map just a little bit, but right now it is sort of the, the situation. If you ever end up in the situation where you're coming out of your spawn, it is going to take a serious degree of effort to try to get out. It's always tough, doesn't we? I mean, we've seen it from this side of FaZe last time around. 
Go though, not get locked in there. And really can slow things down. Big gunfight coming through for a BC though, over towards Kleenex. But a lot of good work from Toronto Ultra coming in over towards this B side. You want to hope you have your trophy stamp because there is Nate at plenty floating into it alongside of Atlanta Fitness players. Draza just absolutely loving every single gunfight with the Renani and all of a sudden fall down. You've got Celio in position to further cement this as well. And Void will find a kill pretty much immediately, though. And that may well be the route out here for Toronto Ultra. It took me more than a route out. They find three kills here, Chance. And this is just on point again, just swarming right now. They are happy to see High Rise right now. A weld oiled machine and maybe a body on point right now on the B zone. Doesn't last long. Envoy is going to fall. Draws there for the shutdown. And, and pretty quick on the rotation as well. He actually gets the intel on Insights. And Toronto, funnily enough, Insight with the kill on the right side of the map. Opens up the left. Bodies on point. This is a triple stack coming through. The zone will go fairly quickly, and they're winning the gunfights as well. Kleenex has fall, so only a double stack. It slowed down just a little bit, but that ever-present propane tank, it is going to kill anyone and everyone at every given time. Envoy, last one right now on the zone. Two players behind him. Can't get it done. Atlanta Swarm, only 20 seconds left in the round. Can they find one more push? Yes, scrap all the transfer. Was looking good on the Draza, but he just about survives. And if you're inside, you're already butted up. Draza is here. He will find the gunfight and a potential route over towards the B side. There's going to be a gunfight up against Selium. You're going to have to try and win or not. Get yourself into the corner. Wait for your teammates to come on through. Stones nades out. Hold it down if you can. Just not going to happen, though. It just has no cover. Nobody else was able to get out. Good hold from FaZe once again. Back to back. Defensive holds where no single point taken. Ticks were taken by Ultra, I believe, more so than Atlanta FaZe managed in their first attacking round, at least anyway. So a minor advantage on the Ultra side heading into round number three. It, I mean, honestly, I, I don't even know if advantage necessarily exists for yeah, offense and defense, but the defenses have been clean. You can just see the way the game is almost like altered when it's teams like this that are playing, where Scrap's getting a kill down B Street, and he just pre-fires where he knows the trade is going to come from because when you're playing against teams that have teamwork like this, you know the trades are going to be instantaneous. So it alters the way you have to play. You have to step your game up just a little bit. This is a high pressure environment. And this is just Call of Duty that is almost atypical. It is difficult to make these adjustments. You got Scrap, by the way. The second time he's gone out towards the crane. Does end up getting traded. Morning Salvo commences. Atlanta Bays by themselves. A little bit of pressure on the B zone. Again, happy to play the objective. Happy to stack when they get the opportunities. But for the moment, only two bodies on the point. Trying to ultra on the way over. Insight, not able to find an angle. Scrap's nade is though. So we will be able to find one and ten. Void. All of a sudden, these kills could fall the wrong way if you're a Toronto Ultra fan. Kleenex trying to lock something down to find one is miraculous. And now FaZe can get these two ticks in. Maybe the third in over towards B. Trophies on overtime. Trying to survive if you sell him inside the point. B is gone now. Chance and all of a sudden, their eyes are set on A. The ticks are over towards the FaZe side after those three are locked in at B. They'll have themselves some mid-map control. Toronto Ultra are fighting with their backs against the wall. Teamwork there from Selium, working with uh, Simp in that moment, or working with Draza rather, but they're getting the trades. You can see they just slow the pace down as soon as they get one zone, go back to playing TDM, get those players in their spawn and kill them. Draza on a five, can't get the six, but the trades are always there. You still get the pressure on the zone. It'd be unfortunate that there isn't a trophy, but right now Atlanta Faye is on offense. They do it on the objective. They do it on the kills front. The objective might be stopped for a moment, but still up on four lives. And with a minute and 45, that is so much time for Atlanta to work with. As long as FaZe never get wiped out and forced directly back into their spawn, they might be fine for this round. But Z Ultra have stabilized, bought themselves a bit of map control. And with that comes the kills, two in their favor. Atlanta FaZe, this is the delicate moment. Scrap getting the extra kills. You are consistently now working out your spawn. This could be the problem. The phase though, I mean, you can see them trying to take their time with it just a little bit. Trophy's now out. Working their way through this meticulously once again. Salim going to go for the challenge, finds it on insight as well. He's still sticking out and Kleenex will find them. Gunfights across the map are going to be important over this next five, ten seconds or so because that's going to set up how things start to roll. Envoy will trade this one out. Simp can't find the transfer. Insight is there to find another. Still map control, not there for the defensive team. And Landa FaZe in a good spot. Three lives up onto the zone we go. 
Yeah, no trophies, though. That might be the big issue, right? Every trophy they've thrown down has just gotten shot instantly by Toronto. But now the pressure around the objective. Selium gets to fly. Selium gets to deliver and do a little bit of extra damage. That is four men down. You stack the point. You win the round. Atlanta phase. How quick that cookie crumbles. Selium goes huge. Finds two. Just finds a small gap in the defense. And it's two easy kills from Sel to open up the round fantastic work from him simp is there to seal the deal and then is one round away from 3 owing toronto ultra going over towards the defensive side here as well chance they got to be feeling confident ultra did bring some heat in their attacking round it's going to need to be just that little bit warmer though i like the play from selling at the end right talk about feeling the heat it is a small window of opportunity does he play so around the point there was a split second where he could be aggressive he pounces instantly so he's dialed in, he is bouncing, but once again, it is Draza right now, MVP of the series with 20 kills, leading the lobby. Ultra don't want that one to get away from him. Is he able to get the first kill? You get clean X behind enemy lines for the trades B Street, and efficient for the moment, Sip causing problems. Trade's still there, but only one body on point, but Envoy right now, the omnipresent threat, able to get three kills, but it is still basically all up to Envoy. Can't get help around the zone. He's done his job so far. One second progress already through. Envoy continues to collect kills. They cannot kill this man. Envoy somehow still alive and still begging for help. One kill off the cruise as well. Can he continue to lock this down? B looking like it was maybe going to go Ultra's way, but eventually FaZe will get some control. But pressure now coming in over towards the A side. But if you can find those kills if you're FaZe, things should surely be looking good. We'll get forced away, but we'll have another opportunity. Ultra with a really good start to the round, and will that pave the way for round number five? Razor and Sim find a couple of kills, though. We'll slow Ultra down here after an electric start from the Toronto side. And maybe a weird note, I think Draz has been the guy to get the kills with the exploding propane tank every single round, but another <laughs> team kill coming through, unfortunately. Doesn't matter, not even a little bit. Atlanta phase, another three down. Kleenex, last man standing, trying to stay alive just to keep the map pressure available, but he's having to turn around. His teammates are stuck. He's trying to get out. He can't make it. He gets caught as well. Right back to square one, staring down the barrel of a hot 3-0 Toronto Ultra. This is the final push, the last ditch effort, and you just look at the kill feed. It is Atlanta phase everywhere. You make a move to the objective, you're getting shot by every player on every single section of the map. Atlanta phase have strangled them. Have to absolutely call everything in if you're Toronto Ultra now. Eight seconds, gotta get towards a point, but you don't want to throw it over towards the B side. The BZ is there, can you get rid of him? Nothing found with the cruise missile. Draza will find another over towards B, and Selly will call his in. The big guns are called. The game might be with it as well. Atlanta phase, can they lock it in over towards the B side? The answer is absolutely yes, they can. Three to zero over Toronto Ultra. Statement win from phase. Draza letting them know. Ultra, back to the drawing board. A learning series there from Ultra. They played with fire and they get burned. Long term though, who knows how this is gonna play out. Pedraza gonna have a little bit of fun along the way. Make no mistake, MVP in that series. He was absolutely lights out, but again, against teams like this, it's a full team effort. Selium also spectacular through and through, making the big plays as well. Atlanta Fays go crazy telling you that round 10 ace i think had a, a pretty big impact and that might be the last time toronto ever play games in the pick and bands against atlanta that's just stellar work through and through yeah even simp there in the damage category that's efficient that's a 3-1 on the high rise control and a 3-0 overall i think the karachi might have even been the most impressive performance man yeah. to take down toronto for the 6-0 record that they had for a 250 172 mm -hmm. I mean, they were on cruise control against the best hardpoint team in the game and certainly had a battle there in the S&D, but maybe the only question Atlanta FaZe wanted to get